good morning, everybody. Good to see you out today for our services here in our gymnasium slash auditorium. And for those who are joining us on Facebook, we want to welcome you also. We trust uh, you'll have a good day today in the Lord as we look at the Word of God, as we sing, as uh, we look forward to uh, what the Lord has for us this morning. All righty. Well, let's start off with a couple songs. Brother John's going to come and lead us in our songs. All right, would you please stand with us? And we're going to sing... A song about our country, America the Beautiful. Pay attention to the second verse. Uh, we're going to be honoring our veterans to this service. And on Wednesday, of course, is Veterans Day. And the second verse talks about how they have helped our country. service we'll honor uh, all of our vets and uh, want to say of course thank you for your service 
uh, to our country. Well, let me give you just a few announcements. First off, um, we do want to uh, say hello to everybody. So look around, say hi to somebody. Let them know you're glad to see them in church today. And those of you that are online watching us, why don't you just press like now or love, whatever you want to press, or just say, hey, I'm checking in, hello, I'm here, that sort of thing, okay? Alrighty, and listen, you online folks, I need to hear more from you. You know, you used to really uh, write a lot of comments and all that. Uh, actually, last week you wrote a lot of comments, that was good, but um, I guess it depends on the sermon. But uh, I want to encourage you to, to uh, just let us know you're there and just spread the word and you can share it on your Facebook page so that other people can see what's going on. All right, well, we do uh, also remind you about our offering, which is not taking up, has not been taken up for quite some time, but we still give. And if you didn't have an opportunity to give yet, please do so on the way out. There's an offering box course in the foyer, and there's one over there by the bathrooms and hallway there. So either way, drop your offering in, and I do want to encourage those to keep mailing in your offerings and those that uh, do it electronically, continue to do that. So we appreciate that. And uh, those that watch on Facebook and, you know, you live in another part of the world and you still like kind of what's going on, why don't you send us uh, an offering every once in a while? Of course, we're not online to get offerings and things like that, but it does help with our ministries here and uh, continue to keep, keep going forward. And we still support all of our missionaries, haven't missed any of our missionary support, so we want to thank you. For that, speaking of offering next uh, next couple of weeks, uh, actually November 22nd and 29th, will be our annual Thanksgiving offering. Every year we uh, give you a project we'd like to work on to kind of up improve or upgrade our ministry and or our buildings. And uh, this year we are going to be adding on to the front of the church there just uh, some uh, overhangs to make it a little more pleasant for uh, our kids as they stand out there and as our people as they have to go through the doors. And if you've enjoyed our little porch here in the front, uh, you know, this is kind of what we're going to do there on the, in the front of the building over the other doors there. So we want to encourage you to give towards that generously. So be praying about that and planning on giving accordingly. All right. With Thanksgiving coming up, do want to uh, also, we normally take up uh, baskets. We're not doing that this year just with the virus. And normally we would drop it over by people's houses, things like that. We just uh, are not going to do that this year, but um, uh, our local ACME has contacted our church and said that they are providing uh, meals for families that would need it. And uh, so we thank them for partnering with us. And of course, this is for all nonprofit organizations. Um, they, they've done, done um, extended uh, that. So if you know of a family or if you need a Thanksgiving offering basket to um, please notify our office, give us a call, let us know if it's you or somebody else, and then we notify them how many um, they need to have, and uh, so that would be a great way to get, uh, and I think they cook it for you and everything. You can't be, I might, I might <laughs> ask for one, I don't know. Uh, anyhow, that's, uh, we, that's uh, uh, some information about Thanksgiving, coming up in just a couple of weeks now. All righty. Also, we uh, are going to do something s uh, special next uh, next Sunday. You know, I, I really enjoyed our, our little get together last month in October when McCluskey's came here. We had we had a soup and hoagie luncheon, and I had so many people say we had such a great time. Could we do that again? So we're going to do it again next uh, next week. We're going to have that. We have the hoagies, we have the soup, and uh, some probably some other sides. I don't know. And uh, we're going to kind of make it a little Thanksgiving because instead of chicken noodle, we're going to serve turkey noodle, all right? So uh, we got it all planned out, and we'll have turkey subs as well as Italian. You always have to have the Italian subs. So anyhow, uh, now I need for you to, I, I need to know how many to order. So there's no cost, no charge. It's just we put, put it on for anybody who wants to come. But you should have received a piece of paper uh, on your way in. Fill that, in, in. fill that out. Drop that in the basket out for you when you leave today. And uh, then uh, if you're online and you want to, you're planning on coming, just go on uh, line and there is a place, I believe, um, I don't know. You should have gotten an email last week. You'll get an email this week and it'll give you an opportunity to respond. If all else fails, just call the church then you're gonna come, all right? So those are some ways in which we can do that. All righty, so that's some things that are happening here. And uh, Brother John's going to come. We're going to sing a couple more songs about our country. So Brother John's going to come and sing right now.
right, would you please stand with us again? And we're going to be uh, singing about uh, what God can do for our country. You know, we are, of course, are blessed people, but we know that there's a lot of uh, sinful things going on in our country, and we need the Lord to heal us. right now but you're probably familiar with the tune it's a traditional Irish melody that is usually played with be thou my vision this song is called blessed is the nation for our country and uh, to just pray that God will bless uh, despite all the controversies, despite all the division, all the strife, that God would have his perfect will and way done in our country. Well, this coming Wednesday is Veterans Day and uh, as uh, for many years now, our nation has honored those who have served our country uh, in a branch uh, of the uh, 
uh, whether it be Army, Navy, Air Force, uh, National Guard. And uh, so if you have been involved in, as a veteran, you uh, serve our country in any way, would you please stand at this time? We want to recognize you. And uh, just go ahead and have a stand there. All right. God bless you. Well, thank you for being our uh, for for uh, being a part of our country, a very important part. Thank you, gentlemen, because of uh, the whole Facebook would not be able to call out everybody's name, and you'll be able to hear all that. But we do want to thank you for your your service, and of course, there's many others that uh, are watching online. Some of our good folks who are not able to come out, our veterans. We want to uh, say thank you also for our. Uh, for, for your part, protecting our country, it's one thing to have freedom, it's another thing to actually put your life on the line uh, to, uh, to, make, to ensure that freedom, not only our freedom, but uh, our, our wars have really involved other nations helping them stay free likewise. So uh, we thank you for your service. We're gonna show a, a video at this time to uh, honor our vets, so if you just watch this at this time. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I say your name. I you solemnly swear. You Support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. And to bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. Veterans Day on the anniversary of the armistice that ended World War I. The armistice that began on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. The timing of this holiday is quite deliberate in terms of historical fact. But somehow it always seems quite fitting to me that this day comes deep in autumn when the colors are muted and the days seem to invite contemplation. It is, in a way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise, but most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. And all we can do is remember, I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. In memory of those who gave the last full measure of devotion, may our efforts to achieve lasting peace gain strength. Let us make a vow to our dead. Let us show them by our actions that we understand what they died for. Strengthened by their courage, 
hardened by their value and born by their memory. Let us continue to stand for the ideals for which they lived and died. We're going to let our kids head to our junior church, which is, starts in the auditorium. So if you head to the back of the, uh, our gym here, and uh, we have a video, and then, of course, a junior church. And those who maybe watch online, not sure what we do, we, we have a good program for the kids. They get to watch the kids club video that we put on every week at 10 o'clock and then also of course they have their their teaching time as well as singing and music Alrighty, so before the message uh, suzanne wilson will come and sing for us
great song reminds us of the cross well let's take our bibles turn with me ephesians chapter 5 today now as we turn there um i forgot to mention our luncheon next sunday is uh combined with a uh, a guest singer we had uh brother rodney uh, robinson with us here he happens to be my next door neighbor he's a pastor of the church up in uh, philadelphia and presently they're they're building it and they're they're not open like what we would be so everything is online and uh he has uh visited with us a number of times and i invited him to come and sing that day so not only we're going to have the meal but he'll be singing uh after the uh, uh after the meal and then i'll bring a, a brief message so we'll kind of do like we do with the mccluskeys to be honest so uh just don't eat and run eat and uh, we'll sing and we'll enjoy the whole day okay all righty well let's turn to ephesians chapter 5 We've been looking at um, the theme, we are so blessed as we've studied Ephesians, and we're up to chapter 5, verse number 18. Let's start off by reading just a couple of verses here. And uh, verse number 18, and be not drunk with wine, whereas in excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. If you notice in verse number 18, we read this phrase, be filled with the Spirit. I want to look at that phrase this morning. We're going to teach and preach about what it means to be filled with the Spirit. Shall we pray? Father, thank you this morning for the music we've heard, and thank you, Lord, for the message that uh, we're about to bring. I pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you would teach us and show us more about you since this whole message is about the Spirit of God. And uh, thank you, Lord, for imparting and planting your Spirit within us at, at, at our salvation. And I just pray, Lord, that we would be willing and able and open to having the Spirit of God lead us and direct us and guide us into all truth. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. In the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul references the Holy Spirit a number of places. In fact, let's just do a little review, if you would. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 13, if you want to look at some of these verses along with me here, and notice how many times the Holy Spirit is mentioned. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, in whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom that you believed, and you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. When you got saved, the Holy Spirit came and lived within you. And you were sealed, meaning you were part 
of God's family. There's a divine seal that's been placed upon you and you can never lose your salvation. Aren't you glad you can never lose your salvation? And so we're sealed until the day of redemption. <clears throat> Notice in, in chapter two, verse number 18, chapter two, verse 18, as we read another passage or verse, it says, and through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the father. We have access to the Father through who? Through the Holy Spirit of God. And so the Holy Spirit helps us as we approach the Almighty God. And as we approach the Father, we have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Look at verse number 22. In whom you also are built up together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. So God is building his church. People are getting saved. The habitation is the household of God. And it is the Holy Spirit that keeps us all together, one big happy family. And so it is through the Spirit of God. Look at chapter three, verse number five. Chapter three, verse five. Which is, in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Holy Spirit. Do you know how people wrote the Bible? They didn't sit down and say, mm, let me remember what I, what I learned and what I saw about Jesus. The Holy Spirit filled them and taught them and told them what to write. So every prophet preached what the Spirit of God told them to say. Every writer of the, of the Old and New Testament all received their message from the Holy Spirit. So understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit, how powerful he truly is. Look at verse number 16, 316. It says uh, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the might by his spirit in the inner man. Now these are all verses we already preached about and taught about, but if you remember, how are we strengthened? How do we carry on from day to day? The Holy Spirit gives us strength. Aren't you glad that today you have enough strength to make it to church? Uh, the Holy Spirit helps you. And in, in no matter what days we live in, uh, listen, we have nothing to be discouraged about. We have nothing to worry about. Uh, yes, I know there's all kinds of issues. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We just elected a new president. We have all kinds of things happening, protesting and, and all different things going on. But I want you to understand something, that when you get weary and worn out, realize that the Holy Spirit gives you enough strength every day. And so we thank God for his Holy Spirit. Look at chapter four, verse number three, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Now where uh, people may say, we're gonna you know, bring unity. The only true unifier amongst believers is the Holy Spirit. And so we have unity because of the Holy Spirit of God. And no matter who we are, no matter where we come from, no matter what our backgrounds are, we're one in Christ because the Holy Spirit makes us have this unity. Now notice also in verse number four, there's one body, one spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling, one spirit. And so we all have the same Holy Spirit living in us. It's not like I have a Holy Spirit, you got a different Holy Spirit and somebody else has a different Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit, by the way, that was in Jesus is the same Holy Spirit that's in us. And we thank God for that. Look at uh, chapter uh, four. And uh, verse number 30, 430 says this, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. We talked about grieving the Holy Spirit. So we, if we don't grieve the Holy Spirit, he has a perfect work in our life. When we grieve the Holy Spirit, we're going against what he's trying to do uh, in our life. And then uh, if you look at uh, chapter five, verse number nine, chapter five, verse nine, it says, for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Galatians also talks about the fruit of the spirit, but that's what comes from the spirit of God. When the spirit of God is in you, you have goodness that flows out of you. When the spirit of God's in you, you have righteousness that flows out of you. When the spirit of God is working, you have truth that flows out. And so these are all manifestations or fruit or things that are, uh, you know, come as a product or as a fruit of the Spirit of God. Now we come to chapter five, verse 18, and notice the word of God says this, and be not drunk with wine, whereas in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Filled with the Spirit. Now, if you're saved today, you have the Holy Spirit living in you. Now, to have the Holy Spirit in you and to be filled with the Spirit are two different things. See, at salvation, the Holy Spirit, you didn't know this maybe, and I didn't know it when I got saved. I was a 19-year-old 
uh, kid uh, back in the day and uh, a little church, actually a good sized church outside of Pittsburgh. And I walked down the aisle on a Sunday night in October and I asked Jesus to be my savior, got on my knees, got up off my knees, knowing that something was different, knowing that now my sins were forgiven, knowing that I was going to go to heaven based on the fact that I placed my faith and trust in Jesus. But I didn't know that night that the spirit of God came and lived within my soul now and in my body and has taken up residency in my life, in my body since the day of salvation. First Corinthians six nineteen describes it like this. Uh, what? No, you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God and you're and you're not your own. So when I was bought, I'm no longer me. My, I no longer own anything. God owns me. And he placed his spirit in me. And when you got saved, God owned you. Now, officially, you became his child. And he placed his Holy Spirit in you. And your body now becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is, is, is a mystery, to be honest. And, you know, he, he kind of doesn't get a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, we don't talk a lot about the Holy Spirit. Uh, we talk much about God the Father, and we talk a lot about Jesus. But the Holy Spirit's kind of that mysterious part, a person of the Godhead. In fact, there are some people that don't even know he's a person of the Godhead. They call him an id or a force or uh, just a manifestation of Jesus, the Spirit, uh, you know, that was in Jesus. And yet the Holy Spirit is a person of the Trinity. And I know it's hard for us to understand the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Aren't they all one God? Yes. But they all have separate personalities and separate duties or functions, shall we say. And, uh, you know, it was Jesus that came to the earth. So you think about it in the Old Testament. Who was it that spoke to Moses? The father. Who was it that uh, spoke to Abraham? The father. Who was it that would come and reveal himself to mankind and to the prophets? It was God the Father, the first person of the Trinity. And then for 33 years, Jesus came to the earth. And now we hear from Jesus. And Jesus, of course, said, you know, I and my father are one. And uh, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. And so the world in the Old Testament, the focus was on the father. In the New Testament days, the focus was on Jesus. But now we're living in a church age because when Jesus left this earth, he promised the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And he said, it's expedient that I go away because when I go away, the Holy Spirit's going to come and he is going to live within you. So now for the church age, the last 2000 years, the Holy Spirit is the person of the Trinity that really is responsible for the type of person we become. For if the Holy Spirit is in control of us, then the Holy Spirit will make us more like the Lord Jesus Christ, that, uh, that uh, the Spirit of God was in him. And so the Holy Spirit is, is given to us to convict us, to draw us to salvation. The Holy Spirit guides us, leads us, helps us with temptation. The Holy Spirit teaches us God's word. The Holy Spirit comforts us, strengthens us, prays with us and for us. A lot of great responsibilities, a lot of great things that the Holy Spirit does. And we don't even probably realize and understand every day the Holy Spirit lives within me. Holy Spirit lives within you. And so with that in mind, let's look at the passage of Scripture. And I'm going to give you a few points this morning. The first point I want you to examine with me is the command. The command. Notice in verse number 18. And be not drunk with wine, where is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. We are told, be filled with the Spirit. What does that mean? Well, number one under that, it's not an option. It's not optional. And so it's not, uh, you have a choice. God says, you must be filled with the Spirit. And so you don't go into life saying, well, you know, some days I'll, I'll let the Spirit lead me. Other days I won't let the Spirit, I'll, I'll lead myself. You see, there's only two that can lead us, our flesh or the Spirit. Either the Spirit's in control or you're in control. So every day you have an opportunity. You have a, uh, you know, you have to make decisions. Is the Holy Spirit going to fill me today? Now we all have the Holy Spirit, but the question is, have we given the Holy Spirit his proper due and allowed him to have his proper influence and impact in our life? And so though we have all of him, does he have all of us? And that's very important. And so, we have to realize that, I, that being filled with the Spirit of God does not come just at salvation because I have the Holy Spirit living in me. So it's, it's a command. Secondly, under that, it's all about yielding. It's about yielding. 
It's about giving yourself over to the Spirit of God. Now, we all have decisions. Once again, who is going to be in charge of my life? Am I going to be in charge of my life or the Holy Spirit going to be in charge of my life? When the Holy Spirit's in control, then God is in control of our life. When we're in control, then we're out of control. Do you understand that? And the, the thing about the Holy Spirit of God, I mean, one day we can have the Spirit of God in control of our life. The next day we could choose to let ourselves have the control of our life. And, and to be honest, probably most Christians go kind of back and forth like that. You know, I, I think of the, I think of Peter, the, uh, the apostle, and uh, some days he was so bold for the Lord. And then other times he was denying the Lord. But yet, you know, we, we see sometimes that, that though we have the Spirit of God, doesn't always guarantee we're going to be great Christians. Because we have to be filled with the Spirit of God, not just possess the Spirit of God. And so it's yielding. It's every day saying, Lord, I yield myself to you. Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you. Don't let me control my life. Holy Spirit, you control my life. It's yielding. It's allowing somebody else to take charge in your life. Third aspect of that, it's asking to be filled. It's asking to be filled. You make the decision. No, once again, the command is this. Be filled with the Spirit. So if I'm going to be filled with the Spirit, that means I must ask regularly, daily, Holy Spirit, please fill me. Please take control. Listen to this passage of scripture, Luke chapter 11, verse 13. If ye then be evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more, how much more shall your father in heaven give you the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? So if, if, if I as a father know how to give good gifts unto my children, and, and the Bible says if ye be evil, know how to give good gifts. Even evil fathers know how to give good gifts. He said, how much more will your father give you the Holy Spirit? Now, we have the Holy Spirit once again at salvation, but what he's saying is that you need to ask if the Holy Spirit will fill you. If you know the, the, the life of Jesus at the age of 30, what happened? Well, he began his earthly ministry. He goes down to the river and meets John the Baptist, and it's there that John the Baptist, he asked John the Baptist to baptize him. He, John said, I'm not worthy. Jesus said, baptize me. And so he, he, as he was being baptized, what happened? The Holy Spirit, in the form of a dove, came down, and the Father's voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, from that point on, the Bible says that Jesus, being filled with the Spirit, went out and ministered. And so think about this. The Spirit of God did not really come in and empower and impact the life of Jesus until that day of the baptism. And from that time on, we always read how Jesus was led in the Spirit. He spoke in the Spirit. Everything that Jesus did, he did as a Spirit-filled man. Now, that is our example. That if Jesus was filled with the Spirit of God and everything he did was as a Spirit-filled person, you and I need also to realize that we must allow the Spirit of God to direct us just like he directed Jesus in every aspect. And so I must ask, Holy Spirit, please, when was the last time you prayed to the Holy Spirit? When was the last time you asked the Holy Spirit to fill you? When was the last time we said, Holy Spirit, I surrender? Now we sing all to Jesus, I surrender, but we need to surrender to the Holy Spirit also. And ask the Spirit to lead us and guide us and help us and comfort us. You know why? Because we can't live this life without the Holy Spirit's power. You can try all you will. You can turn over leaves. You can try to, uh, you know, be the best Christian you can. But you need an outside source of power to live the Christian life the way it needs to be lived. The, that's why a lot of times people, they, they don't, you know, they hear about how Christians live. And they say, I don't want to do that. I can't live like that. I can't be this person who goes to church all the time and does right and does good and never says anything bad. I can't be like that. And you're right. You can't be like that. But if you're filled with the Spirit, you can be. It is the Spirit of God that changes us from who we are to who we need to be. And so every day we keep on seeking to be filled with the Spirit of God. And that, that uh, verb there, to be filled, is in the Greek is talking about not a one-time filling, but a continual filling of the Spirit of God. I liken to this. You know, you drive a car and your tank goes to E. What do you have to do? You got to fill it up and you're good for a while. And then it goes back again and then you have to fill it up again. And this is the idea that I have that the Spirit of God sometimes, not that he leaves me or I'm drained of the Spirit of God, but he's not in total control. And so we have to continually 
uh, be asking and, um, and be filled with the Spirit of God. Now, unfortunately, some Christians have muddled the waters of what being filled with the Spirit means. I've heard some charismatics proclaim that if you're filled with the Spirit, you have to speak in tongues. And so if you don't speak in tongues, you're not filled with the Spirit of God. Well, I guess that means I'm not filled with the Spirit of God because I never spoke in tongues. I actually spoken in English all the time, but uh, past that, you know, I, I don't know any, uh, I've never been, you know, have that. But anyhow, it's, and so they, they believe and, and some teach that unless you are uh, exercising some spiritual gift, such as tongues, you are not filled with the spirit. There's others who say, well, you got to get slain the spirit. You know, somebody's got to come by when he's evangelist, he's got to bop you on the head. You know, there I go. And now I'm filled with the Spirit of God because well, I, I went to some meeting and I got hit in the head and I fell down. You know, and, and that's not what being filled with the Spirit's all about. It's not some, some, some you know, experience that, that, you know, left you shaking or trembling or, or, you know, in ecstasy or whatever other moods that people get into as they are, quote, unquote, in the Spirit. You know, there, a number of years ago, they used to have, a, they had a, a, a laughing revival. It was, if you're filled with the Spirit, you, you laugh. And the whole church, they're laughing, laughing, laughing for an hour, an hour, a couple hours. And then they feel the Spirit. Why? Because they're laughing all the time. You know what? I'm glad you're happy. But that's not scriptural. And so people don't understand what being filled with the Spirit. Oh, I got to speak in tongues. I got to laugh. I got to get, get slain in Spirit. I got to fall down. And, and, and by the way, you know, you know the, these are well-meaning Christians. I'm not, I'm not here to cut them down because maybe some of you come from that background. Yeah, I believe they're sincere, but, you know, we have to go to the Word of God and see what the Bible says rather than somebody's experience. Now, so we see a command. Well, let's secondly look at a comparison, a comparison, a comparison. Look, look at verse number 18 again. And be not drunk with wine, where is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, it seems odd at first, if you just read this verse, like, what does being filled to, uh, be not drunk with wine in excess, what does drinking, drunkenness, have to do with being filled with the Spirit? The comparison is, now, the flesh versus the Spirit. For example, um, when a person partakes in drinking of wine or alcohol, certain things start to happen and they keep drinking more and, and more things start to happen. And the, the more drunk they get, the more things happen in their life. <clears throat> and so the comparison is, instead of getting drunk and being filled with the alcohol, why don't you get filled with the spirit of God? In Paul's days, uh, drunkenness was uh, certainly a, a thing that they faced, just like it is today, just like every generation. And um, so why would he say, be not drunk with wine or is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit? What does being filled with wine and being filled with the Spirit have to do? Well, he's comparing and contrasting and showing you two opposite things, but actually have a common ground. For example... Listen to this point. <clears throat> if, you're, if you're filled with wine, there is a change in your personality. Do you know somebody that's maybe, unfortunately, maybe you've been drunk before, you know somebody's been drunk, and you notice that all of a sudden their personality changes. They could be a nice, quiet person. All of a sudden they're argumentative and they're fighting and they're, they're cursing and they're saying stupid things. It's altered their mind. It alters their morals many times. It alters uh, their personality and who they are. And they say things and they do things many times that are ridiculous, that are dumb, that they would never do if they weren't under the influence of alcohol. I heard a story of a guy that was, <clears throat> had been drinking and driving and a policeman pulled him over. The policeman said, yeah, do you know how fast you're going? No, I don't know. He says, well, you're going well over the speed limit. I don't have to give you a ticket. Guy says, how much is it? He says, it's $100. And so the man pulls out his wallet. He's a little tipsy, a little drunk. He gives him $200. And the guy says, what do you give me $200 for? He said, oh, in a couple of days, I'll be coming back the same way. Now, you know, if the guy was normal, he wouldn't even say stupid things like that. Another guy was in a bar one day, and he was going around to all the people in a bar. He, What's your name? He'd write it down. What's your name? He'd write it down. What's your name? Write it down. 
all of a sudden he comes to this one guy and uh, he says, what's your name? And God tells him and he says, by the way, why do you want to know what my name is and why you're writing down all these names? And he says, uh, I'm writing down all the names of everybody I'm going to beat up in this bar. And the guy stands up, a, a real big, massive guy. And he looks at me and goes, okay, well, I'll erase your name. You know, uh, you see, we say things, well, not we, but, but people say things and do things that they never would have done before. They never would have tried to say something stupid or pick fights. And the truth of the matter is that when you're under the influence of alcohol, you are a different person. Now, be not filled with wine, which is an excess, but what? Be filled with the Spirit. So instead of having the personality that you have, God says, I'm going to change your personality. Now, when wine changes your personality for bad, God says, I'm going to change your personality for good. Do you know that uh, when you... Or when you um, or feel the spirit, you're not angry all the time. You're not mad all the time. You don't say stupid things all the time. You don't make dumb decisions all the time. When you're under the influence of the spirit of God, things are different. Things are different. Secondly, under that, there is a boldness. There's a boldness. A guy, uh, many times to get his nerve up, you know, drinks more and all of a sudden he'll say whatever he wants to say and he's bold and he's brash and <coughs> argumentative. The Bible says, be not drunk with wine. Don't let alcohol fill you up so that you need boldness. But why don't you let the spirit of God fill you? Because guess what we need as Christians? Boldness. You know what we need? We need some bold Christians. I'm tired of these hidden closet Christians, the ones that don't want to come out and let people know what they believe. Tired of these Christians that just want to fit in. I call them chameleon Christians. They, you know, they change their colors, whatever group they're with. And so when they go to work and everybody's cussing and swearing, telling dirty jokes, they, they stand around and they, they, they laugh and they participate and all that. Then when they come to church, oh, bless God, we've got to change our hat now. And because they don't want to take a stand and they don't want to be known as a Christian because, you know, someone may not invite them to the next party. Somebody may not be their buddy anymore. And we have too many Christians that are ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why should I be ashamed of the one who saved me? Why should I be ashamed of the one who died on the cross and paid for my sins? Why should I not boldly proclaim that I love Jesus and he loves me and that you, that you need to be saved? The truth is, many times we, we, we're not bold. But, and you know what? That's exactly how the early apostles were. When they were um, found out that Jesus was going to die on a cross... Who passed John stood at the cross and watched Jesus? None of them. Peter had already denied Jesus three times because some girl came by and said, uh, yeah, you were one of his, his, his uh, disciples. What happened is they all scattered and they hid. John was the only one that had boldness. He's the only one that stood at the cross with Jesus. What happened to all the rest of them? They were afraid. They were afraid. You know what they're afraid of? That we're going to be next. That they're hanging Jesus on the cross. I might be the next one on the cross. And so they took off and they ran and they hid and they were afraid. Well, then Jesus resurrects and, you know, he appears to the apostles. They're, they're all huddled up. They're still afraid. They're in a room and Jesus, fear not. Don't be afraid. And then he gives them this assignment. Uh, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Now, here's a bunch of frayed Christians, a bunch of men that couldn't even stand at the cross with Jesus. And they're saying now, and now they're being told to do what? To go out and preach the gospel everywhere. Knowing that the possibility of preaching the gospel could end your life. Uh, how did James, the apostle, how did his life end? He was beheaded in, in prison. How did um, Stephen, how did his life go? Preach his first sermon. He died a martyr's death. It's serious business preaching the gospel in those days. You understand? I mean, it's not like today I'm going to go talk to somebody. Oh, they wouldn't take my gospel track. Oh, they wouldn't answer the door. <laughs> you know, there's some, we, we, think, we, we think we're persecuted. You don't understand what persecution is. 
I mean, you understand what persecution is. We need to go to a country that hates Christianity, that maybe is Muslim dominated or some other strong religion, and how that they will on purpose throw Christians in jail and on purpose have them executed. You know, when that is what's on the line, sometimes people are not too brave and not too bold. It's easy for us to be in church here, isn't it? It's easy for us to carry the banner of Christ as long as I'm at 2510 Marsh Road. You know, we're called to, you go to work tomorrow and you bunch around a, around a bunch of unsaved people. You know what? They need to hear Jesus, about Jesus. And they need to hear it from you. They need to hear, to hear it from me. And when you, wherever you are, you got to make a stand for Christ. Well, how are you going to be bold when inwardly many times we're timid people like those apostles? Well, guess who changes your personality and gives you boldness? The Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden now, just like some drunkard is bold and brave and says a bunch of dumb things, we that are filled with the Spirit of God stand up and say a bunch of right things for the cause of Christ. Now, all these other people are, are out there and, you know, they're making their voices heard. Why, why are we not making our voices heard? Everybody else is protesting, protesting, campaigning, and, 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 and I'm not getting into all the political ramifications. But the point I'm trying to make is that we as Christians, when are we going to make our voices heard for the gospel of Jesus Christ? When are we going to tell people how to be saved? Well, you need the Holy Spirit to make you bold. And then I want you to notice another point under this point is that, <clears throat> that uh, be not drunk with wine or as an excess, but be filled with the spirit. There is an influence. Alcohol influences you for bad. Do you understand that? Alcohol influences you. When you get drunk, you usually don't do good things. Uh, you know, we're not going to make it sound like, oh, well, you know, they're funny and they're nice, you know, when they're drunk and they say silly things. It's, it's a sinful activity and, and it results in sinful behavior. Now, on the other hand, though, there's a, a good influence when you're filled with the Spirit of God. Uh, if someone is drunk and they're, 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 they're driving and they're driving drunk and a policeman pulls them over and they get what's called a what? A DUI. What is that? Driving under influence. Because when you're driving under the influence, you can't see straight, you can't walk a straight line, your judgment is off, your, your thinking is off. You, you, you're not, you're, you're, listen, how many people, because of drunk driving, have lost loved ones? It's a very serious crime. And, and, and you know, our government, fortunately, doesn't, you know, look, you know, turn the other cheek. They say, no, you're going to lose your license. You don't deserve to drive. And if you hurt somebody or kill somebody, you're going to be prosecuted for that. Because you drove under the influence. It changed your attitude. It changed your thinking. It changed everything about you. When, when you're filled with the Spirit of God, it, it, it's, you're under a different influence. Where you, one time, um, you know, we're not a nice person. All of a sudden, you're a nice person. And when uh, before you were always given to anger, now all of a sudden you find yourself to be patient. And when you blabbered and gossiped and, and, uh, and criticized, you find yourself now not, not saying those things anymore. And what happens is that when you are under the influence of the Spirit of God, you now become conformed to a different image, not the image that you normally would have, but to the image of Jesus Christ. And so what's the answer? The answer is be filled with the Spirit of God. Now, the third point I want to give you this morning is the consequences of being filled. The consequences of being filled. There's four consequences, and we're not going to go into great detail, but uh, we are going to look at them in uh, verse number 19. When you're filled with the Spirit of God, here's what happens. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Now, notice it didn't say singing to yourselves, but it said speaking to yourselves. In psalms, hymns, spiritual song. What is this saying? Number one, it's saying that we bless each other. We speak to each other. It's in, in psalms, hymns, spiritual song. Meaning that now we're communicating with other people. We have this joy in our heart. We have this truth from the word of God. And we're sharing 
our spirit-filled life with other people. And now we're blessing other people. Where before you didn't care about people, now all of a sudden you care about people. When before you might have been selfish, no, now you're no longer selfish. When before it's how about me, now it's how about you. When before it was, I, I, you know, uh, it's all about me and my selfishness. And now when we are filled to spirit, we bless other people. That means we're looking on purpose to help people. There's many times when I feel impressed to help somebody or say something kind or encourage them or share a verse with them. Text them, call them, whatever. That's not me. That's the Holy Spirit impressing upon me. Be a blessing to somebody. Speak to them in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And so <clears throat> the word of God encourages us. Now, does that mean I should sing to somebody? I don't know if that'll be a blessing, but I have some to people. Uh, <clears throat> by the way, the other day was John's birthday. Happy birthday, John. We sang happy, did we sing happy birthday to you? No, okay. We're gonna do it at the end of the service, all right? But <clears throat> speaking to yourselves, so we bless others. Uh, by the way, um, in music, uh, music is such a blessing, is it not? You know, uh, when, when, we, when we not only are we blessing others, but secondly, we are worshiping the Lord. We worship the Lord. How do you know if you're filled to spirit? Well, I'm blessing people. I'm talking to people, I'm encouraging people, I'm singing to people, I'm, I'm doing whatever is necessary to, to help them in their spiritual lives. And now I worship the Lord because look at verse 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual, uh, 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 spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to whom? To the Lord. So the first part is speaking to yourselves, means speaking amongst yourselves. Now I'm speaking to the Lord. So not only am I blessing others, now I'm worshiping the Lord with my song. You know, music is a beautiful way of expressing your love and gratitude and devotion to God. I know some of you don't like to sing much. You don't have maybe a good voice. Or the song service is just, well, I guess we got to do that because we need to kill some time before the preacher preaches. But do you know that music is, is a joyful way created by God to commune with God? It's a way we worship the Lord. And when we sing songs unto the Lord, you know, you say, well, my voice is not good, but your voice sounds good to God. You know, you say, my voice is not that pleasant, but to God, you, you sound like the most pleasant one that there could be. And so we sing and we worship the Lord. You know, Psalm 40, verse 30 says this. He hath put a new song in my heart, even praise unto God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. When you get saved, you know what? God puts a new song in your heart. Before I was saved, I listened to the songs of the world. After I got saved, I said, you know what? I'm going to start listening to songs about the Lord. And for many years now, I, I enjoy the music that God, that brings pleasure unto God. I'm not saying that every other song that's not, you know, a, a song or a hymn or spiritual is not good. But, but there's a lot that goes on that is not good and not holy and not right. And if a Christian fills his mouth with all the, 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 the rottenness of the world out there as they're singing, it's an indication maybe the Spirit of God really doesn't have control of your life. Because when the, when the Holy Spirit's controlled, you want to sing unto the Lord. You want to praise the Lord. You're not having to do that just because it's time to sing unto God in, in, in church services. You'll find yourself as you're driving home and throughout the day singing songs unto the Lord. That's the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God. You say, well, I never feel like singing to the Lord. Well, then you better ask to be filled with the Spirit of God then. I never feel like blessing people. Then you need to ask to be filled with the Spirit of God. And so, <clears throat> hey, you know what we're going to do in heaven? Somebody should write a book about heaven. Oh, yeah, someone did. All right, another commercial time. Part of the, my study on heaven was the music in heaven. How that we'll learn a new song and how that probably we'll have so many different songs that we'll sing before the throne of God over and over again. Imagine all the songs will be written in heaven as we sing before the throne. Can you imagine seeing God the Father, Jesus at his right hand, the Holy Spirit of God, and, and, and not wanting to sing? Not wanting to praise him? 
And so what, when we're filled with the Spirit, you know what we're doing? We're practicing what we're going to do in heaven for all eternity. And so we sing unto the Lord. And then notice, we give thanks. Verse number 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father and to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know how I can tell if you're not filled with the Spirit of God, you're always complaining, always griping about something, always whining, always as some people call it mully grubbing. This is not, now listen, there's times I look around and, and sometimes I think, man, how can I give thanks for that? Or how can I give thanks for that person? Or how can I give thanks for this condition or this situation? But notice, he doesn't say that you need to pick and choose what to give thanksgiving for. By the way, in a couple of weeks, we'll be designated an entire day to give thanks. But in God's economy, every day is thanksgiving. Does that mean we eat turkey and dressing every day? No. But we give thanks every day. Notice what it says here, verse 20. Giving thanks always. Well, what does always mean? All time, right? Self-explanatory. Giving thanks always for what? All things. In all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, you know how we can tell we're giving, how we're filled with the Spirit of God if just all the time we're looking and saying, thank God I'm saved. Thank God I'm on my way to heaven. Thank God I have a family. Thank God I have a church. Thank God I live in, in, a, in a country like the United States of America. Thank God I get to vote. Whether your person got elected or not, you know what? We still thank God for our country. And we thank God for all his blessings. And we thank God for the veterans that, that have protected us. And we thank God for, for the economy. And we thank God for the freedom. And life is not about this is wrong. We're not like the... The, 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 the uh, Israelites, oh, I got to go collect manna again. You know what? They didn't have to farm. They didn't have to do anything but go out with your little pot every day and collect up the manna and say, thank you, Lord. But no, we don't like manna. It's, it's bland. We want to go back to Egypt and become slaves again so that we can have garlic, leeks, and onions. We'll trade our freedom in for better food. How ridiculous is that? No wonder God had to judge him over and over again in the wilderness. Be thankful for what you have. Be thankful. That's all being part of being filled with the Spirit. The last statement is found in verse number 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submitting yourselves one to another. That means, you know what, I don't have to have my way. I don't have to have my opinion. I don't have to do things always the way I want. I'm going to submit myself. I'm going to yield myself to others. And I'm not going to bully my ways throughout life. But I'm going to try to meet the needs of other people. I'm going to submit myself one to another. Now, there's some examples. We're not going to have time this morning to get into it. Stay tuned next week. Wives, submit your husbands. Husbands, love your wives. You know, all these great passages. We'll look at that next week. But I hope this morning that you'll be challenged to, 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 to understand what does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? Am I filled with the Spirit of God? You know, when you're filled with the Spirit of God, you become like Jesus. You know that? That's not a bad thing, is it? Are not we called Christians? Which means we're like Christ. How do you become like Christ when you don't have all the temperament inside you to be like Jesus? You yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. You pray. I just want to challenge in closing this morning. Why don't we every day get into practice of saying, Holy Spirit of God, I come to you today. Would you please take control of my life? I yield myself to you. I give myself over to you. Help me to be the person that you want me to be. Help the fruit that comes from you be my fruit. And help me to represent Jesus as a spirit-filled Christian. That's what God wants from us. And when we're a spirit-filled Christian, what happens? We sing, we praise the Lord, we bless people, we worship God, we give thanks, we submit ourselves. We do all these wonderful things. It shows that the Spirit of God is in control and not me. Be filled with the Spirit. Let's pray. Father, thank you this morning for this time to share this word. I pray for the filling of your Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, who's come lived within us at the moment of our salvation. As our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed this morning. Maybe somebody's not saved. 
you're listening here, whether it's in this room or whether it's online, and you're not sure that you're saved, you're not sure you're on your way to heaven. Before you can be filled with the Spirit, you have to have the Spirit. And the way you have the Spirit is when you have Jesus. If you're not sure you're saved, why don't you open your heart to Jesus this morning and say, Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I believe Jesus died for me. I believe Jesus rose again. I'm trusting Jesus to save my soul. Come to Jesus this morning. If you've been saved, the Holy Spirit lives within you. How many this morning say, Pastor, I'm going to take you up on your challenge and I'm going to pray on a regular basis and ask the Holy Spirit to fill me and to use me. If that's your heart's desire, would you raise your hand before the Lord this morning and say, Holy Spirit, I need you. I need your help. I need you to change who I am. I need to let you have control and I don't need to have to control anymore. How many desire for the Spirit of God to really have an impact and influence over your life? Father, thank you for this time to share this word. I pray that the Holy Spirit would truly influence us and impact us and change us and give us a holy boldness and make us like you want us to be. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Help us to be filled. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being here this morning. I hope the message was a, a blessing to you. The kids will be ready for you right in the, in the auditorium, those that have kids. And uh, we want not only to say goodbye to you, but to all those on our Facebook page, we want to say goodbye to you also. And uh, after we say goodbye to our Facebook page, people, we're going to sing happy birthday to Brother John, all right? So God bless you. This is what you missed.